A massive thank you to Strixon, Maxim, Giles, Kato, and Seamus for subscribing to the channel. If you're already featured in these clips, make sure you subscribe down below. Hello everyone, and welcome back guys to a brand new video. We're today we're here back with round 5 of season 5 of the F1 2021 My Team Career Mode. Yesterday we're here back for the Monaco Grand Prix. If of course you missed out the last video that went live on Saturday, uh, I would highly, highly recommend going back and checking it out. It kind of got snuck in uh, with all of the F2 action from the the British Grand Prix. So yeah, definitely, definitely would recommend going back and seeing that one. Safe to say, though, the start of this season has seen the highest of highs and the lowest of lows for us on F1 2021 so far. There will be spoilers in just a moment, but some of you guys have asked me recently uh, why we haven't finished off all our durability upgrades. The answer... I simply can't. We have to wait for Honda uh, to deliver the last upgrades onto the car there. You can see they all will be either coming... Uh, these two should be this season. The last two upgrades are going to be next season or maybe even the season after, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be a long time before a car is completely maxed out on F1 at 2021. Championship-wise, though, Max Verstappen now leads the way on 73 points there ahead of Charles Leclerc, the ever-consistent Charles Leclerc in P2. Lando and myself are still third and fourth after, yeah, a horrendous Portuguese Grand Prix last time round. We're seven points back behind Red Bull and the Constructors. Ferrari, again, being super consistent, are just five points back from us. Uh, but yeah, we need to have a good race weekend here in the duel in the Formula 1 crown. I think if ever there was a track where I have a lot of hope and optimism, it's here in Monaco. Right, well here we are then, back on these famous and hallowed Monaco city streets. Fingers crossed this weekend can be a bit of a return for former for us. The pace has been pretty good in the opening three, oh, four rounds, sorry, I should say, of the year. Just, yeah, the luck has not been on our side. DNFs are both Imola and Portimao. I'm hoping the team in Honda have been able to get everything sorted there. I was already just guessing ourselves just a little bit around the Monaco streets. I know I always say this when we come back here, but this is such a track of building up momentum. We had a pretty good run. We had pretty good pace in the F2 series. And generally, again, this is always a track that's delivered some good and memorable results for us. Uh, but not feeling the hard tyres at it so far. A lot of green scores, but not many purples. Well, I think the trend has continued around the rest of the lap. It's a lot of green skulls, but not many purples as we come up towards the line. That's going to be the green skull. That's that's okay. Struggling a bit on our tyre wear sim run, but we're just going to squeeze out the purple score still. Good job, well done. We got some excellent data with that run, so come on back to the garage and I can talk you through the numbers. Genuinely actually wasn't expecting that to get, to get you know, the delta back at the end of that first run. But clearly the car, despite running pretty much maxed out wings, is pretty good down the straights. Yeah, let's dive into qualifying then. The most important Saturday on an F1 calendar. Right, well here we are then, qualifying day for the Monaco Grand Prix and we immediately jump into Q2. And the pace is looking very, very tightly bunched between basically all of the runners this weekend. So we need to try and get good laps in consistently and cleanly here. We might try and go for some double runs over the course of the session. Of course, you just can't take enough fuel out of the car on F1 2021 there as we dance up towards the barriers as we head through Massonet. And then as we head through Upper Mirabeau down in towards the hairpin. Yeah, just got to keep it absolutely darling. Sweat mode laps are definitely going to be a requirement this weekend as well. So we just get a little bit close there. Just nudge the wall into Portier. Big kick of overstair there. Leave a bit of rubber in the tarmac for everyone else. As Yuki Sonoda currently fastest out on a 108.9. That's not a particularly good time from the Mercedes. And I hate doing that on F1 2021 as well. So we're definitely going to have to go for a second run. That's that first lap completely in the bin. Luckily, on F1 2021, that doesn't completely destroy a wheel. But, right, let's go again then. Bottas now down into the 1.7s. That's a bit more competitive. Max Verstappen was looking close to the 106s, though, at the end of Q1. Back down in towards Cell uh, 1. They've got to try and make sure we're ahead of Pierre Gasly. Because, like we saw at Imola a couple of weekends ago, the AI don't like to move out of the way of you. So you head up through Massonet and into Casino Square. Or very, very close to the inside wall there. But at least we've now got a Delta to chase. Through up the Mirabeau once more. It's so, so difficult. You know, you've got to try and get the car squared up for one corner. 
as you're trying to put down the power from the last, and it's just dancing all over the place underneath you, but in towards Portier once more. We found another tenth there, but we weren't anywhere near as brave on the throttle. And that's cost us, and it will cost us all the way down through the tunnel, then noting the barrier on the exit. And again, tap the curbs through there that time round. Give the inside wall a lot of room, though. And yeah, now obviously the Delta is just going to be miles out there. It's all big, big lift through to back purple through the middle sector. Those we chuck it over the swimming pool chicane or nudge the wall again in towards the final couple of turns there. It's been a horrible end to the lap, but it was pretty good up to that point. Luckily, we'll have another set of tyres there as it's all going pear-shaped up towards start-finish line there. That's an 8-5. We need to get out of the way of Pierre as well before I forget. That's why I cut turn one. And yeah, that's not a particularly great representative. Right, final lap then here from Monaco. And sweat mode is definitely going to be needed. Finding a bit of time as we head in towards the tunnel. But yeah, we need another half a second. Through the final corner. I don't even have to look at the delta. It is nine tenths up though. That's what we need. A second up as we come to the line. It's P8. Oh, I love to see that. That felt like a pretty good lap in the end. But yeah, definitely more time to find there. But happily we snuck through into Q3. There we go then. Max Verstappen a 1064 though. Phenomenal pace from the Red Bull there. Charles Leclerc, the only man within seven tenths of him. And even then, Max, uh, Charles Leclerc was only quarter of a second back. Lando in P3. Any major surprises there? Both McLarens, Aston, and Alpines out. So again, Alpha Tauri delivering the goods on Saturdays here. Hamilton down in ninth as well. Let's dive into Q3 then. We've only got one fresh set of rubber here. So this is going to have to be all or nothing. Well, I can't lie as we get out for Q3. We've only got one run at this and I'm not optimistic. We're going to be much higher than ninth place. That everyone now dipping down into the 106s, but we're going to give it our best shot. Oh, a bit of a mistake through turn one is not going to help us out, but... Yeah, we've got to just try and get this lap in. We can still go quicker than Grand New Joe at very least. Oh, look at the understeer. What is up with this car? Why suddenly are we facing so much understeer here on the Monaco streets? It's not what we need. The balance is all over the place so far. Lando Norris has completely got it hooked up this weekend. But qualifying now complete. And I'm not convinced this lap's going to be any better than 10th. It's all just going horribly, horribly wrong here. Oh, Charles cleared it. Oh, ha, ha. Yeah, I think the lap was already completely gone by that point. The AI are just so fast over a qualifying lap here on F1 2021. But that's going to do it then for qualifying here for the Monaco Grand Prix. It's P10 on the grid. Not the end of the world, but not ideal. Well, there we are then, the end of qualifying for the Monaco Grand Prix. And it is Max Verstappen who takes pole by just five thousandths of a second over our teammate Lando Norris there. Ferrari lock out the second row ahead of Perez there and both Mercedes. Both Alpha Towers ahead of me. But yeah, I mean, even if we nailed the lap, we would have only beat Guan Yu Zhou there. How on earth they're all running close to one minute sixes is ridiculous. But race pace can always be different here. Let's dive in. Come on. I've partnered up with the F1 store for 2022, the best place to buy Formula 1 merchandise. Currently, they have an incredible end-of-year sale on with plenty of 2021 lines available at up to 40% off with official merch available from every Formula 1 team. If you're interested, click the link at the top of the description or in the pinned comment down below to help support the channel.
Formula One returns to Monte Carlo once again today, home to the world famous Monte Carlo Casino, first opened in 1863. And of course, a certain road race first held here in 1929. There's no greater an occasion, no more valuable a win than the Monaco Grand Prix. The prestigious Circuit de Monaco then, it's not all that dissimilar today to the layout that made its debut almost a century ago. It's two miles and 19 corners through the streets of Monte Carlo. And although the average lap speed of around 93 miles per hour is the lowest of the season, the tiny margins for error make it the natural habitat of the safety car. It's just about time to go to the track for the beginning of the race. But before we do, Anthony Davidson, what types of strategy do you think we can expect for today's event? Well, there's a lot that both the driver and the team have to keep in mind when going into a race. The tires, fuel, energy recovery systems, the list goes on and on. But I think the key to today's victory will come down to the pit stop strategy. Come in too soon and you might find yourself needing more than one stop. Too late and you're putting yourself at a disadvantage by spending longer on worn tyres. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he starts from pole position. And Lando Norris lines up alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc. Sainz, Sergio Perez, and Sonoda. Hamilton, Gasly, Joe, and Mr. Monaco. Ricardo, Bottas, Esteban Ocon, and Russell. Mazepin, Latifi, Mick Schumacher, and Robert Schwartzman. Giovinazzi, Lundgaard, Stroll, and Callum Eilert. And now it's time to head down to the track. Okay, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. Right, well, here we are then on the grid, ready for the Monaco Grand Prix. Really, really looking forward to this one here today. But if ever we needed a good result to try and give us some motivation heading in towards the latter stages of this year, now is definitely going to be the day. I know saying the latter stage is just one third into a season uh, is kind of insane, but... Yeah, we really need a good race out here on the Monaco streets. A couple of drivers with penalties right at the back, but they're certainly not going to help us out much today. Yeah, we just need to keep it clean, keep it tidy. Maybe we can try and stretch the first stint if other drivers are going to get caught up in slower traffic. But let's just get in then here for round five of the year from the Monaco Grand Prix. Waiting on those five red lights. And it is lights out and away we go. And, oh, come on, that, that was... Ooh, Ricardo, that was early on the brakes as we don't end up losing a position there. Nice clean overtake back up the inside of Ricardo who completely took me by surprise there. Rubbing his racing as we head up the hill on lap one. It's got to be so, so careful of that understeer. As all there definitely was a little shove from Ricardo there. Maybe just keeping his nose in wherever I don't think he should have been. But yeah, not the best start in the world. Not the worst as up the inside of Guan Yu Zhou. We'll look through the hairpin on that one. Guan Yu Zhou will concede the position there. So up one spot then at the start of this race. Yellow flags is always out on that one here. Just you to all of the backlog as everyone seems to have navigated through the hairpin all in one piece there. But it looks like it is still the Stappen ahead of our teammate and both Ferraris all line a stern off the start. I think we were the only mover inside the top 10. And yeah, just eradicating the young Chinese driver down to 11th place there. But again, I've not said it before. It's all like in into a rhythm here as that's not going to help us on the end of lap one. Lucky we didn't nudge a wall there. But yeah, we just got to try and get our head down focus today. We often do a lot of commentary over these races, but this one is not going to be so easy. Oh, we got yellow flags out. Someone in front of us already with issues. Please don't tell me that's Lando Norris in this Grand Prix. No, it appears to be is one of the... Oh, it's the Perez! The, the no second Red Bull engine flags. that's gone up this year on both of them. Have been Sergio Perez, so heartbreak for Checo. And I can absolutely relate to that one there. Both of us now, Honda power units have gone up in four of the five Grand Prix to start this year there. And poor old Sergio Perez has faced the brunt of it down at Red Bull. He's out of the race. We're up to P8 there as we kind of lost a bit of time trying to get round him through to back. But does that create a little bit of squeaky bum time down at Red Bull? It doesn't bode us much confidence either. Honda have got a lot of answering to do. Giving us a powerful power unit, but a bit like the BMW of the mid-80s. 
It's really good, but lasts for about three laps, which isn't isn't ideal in a 40-lap Formula 1 Grand Prix. Weirdly enough, I don't think Alpha Tari have had any reliability issues so far this year. They might have had small problems in a couple of Grand Prix, but no mechanical failures so far for the Red Bull Junior team there. But, you know, all over the back of Pierre into T1. Struggling to find anywhere to make a move though early on, but we are slowly ramping up the pressure. So sort of seeing if anything's going to be possible there as we try to avoid snagging a break at the top of the hill. Oh, and nudge the Armco again. There's going to be a lot of that today. Uh, but yeah, all over the back of Pierre in probably a place now. When you're under full racing conditions, we're not going to be able to make a move. Around the outside through the hairpin? No. There's a lot of understeer again coming from the front end. No idea what that's all about. Come on, Pierre Gasly. Oh, we just can't do anything. And then we get all over his gearbox and the dirty air just kicks in. Can we get around the outside? No, we need to try and just stop throwing him off his game a little bit here. And we just lose so much through Portier. So we can't get close enough by the time we get down in towards the chicane to go for a send. A new strategy is available on the MFD. Team recommending a new strat. What's that going to be? So just attack the curbing. Oh, running very, very deep again. They want us to go a couple of laps longer. That's fine by me. Come on. I don't want to spend all day looking at the back of an Alpha Tower. We've actually got to run in towards turn one. Oh, bit of contact. We're increasing the gap on the car behind by five tenths per lap. Felt like we made it very clear to Gasly we were going up the inside there, but he did try and defend from it, and I think we've both got away with it without damage. A little bit closer to Pierre this time around, though, as we head down through the Monaco Tunnel, but again, not close enough to go for anything. I do not want to be looking at an Alpha Tauri car for the entirety of this GP. Come on. We've got to find something there. As you can see, Gasly's starting to struggle a bit more on the tyres. Can't help but feel if we do get past him, we will start to pull away. It's just so frustrating. Again, if we get close in towards turn one. At the inside. Oh, it's a very, very aggressive move, but we get it slowed down. And Gazzi, I think, got away with it as well. Learned to Good. back out. Good job. Nice overtake. Team happy with that one. That normally means the FIA are. And if they are, we are. With that one, finally. Only taking us a quarter of this Grand Prix. And we are finally past Pierre. We've got five seconds, though, up to the first Mercedes in front of Lewis Hamilton. Let's get our head down. Careful, we think you're going to start losing some tyre grip around now. Team just warning us about the tyres, and it's definitely true. These tyres are certainly we're not delivering the, the way window. they once were. You'll be on the mediums. Yep, and we will be on to the mediums, but we're taking close to a second a lap out of Hamilton. So clearly everyone else is struggling just as badly as we are, but Verstappen, yeah, has just romped away early on in this race. I was really hoping we might be able to cause an upset here, but unless we get a safety car, it's going to be difficult. There we go, first few cars into the box. So I think Lando's going to be coming in the end of the next one then. Hamilton and Sykes, the first to blink, as well as Pierre Gasly okay, behind us. Gap ahead is 6.0 seconds. And they are all going mediums to the end of this race. Do we just try and stay out a load longer and pray for a safety car? I think we're just going to have to box as normal and try and resume in position. Lando into the pits then at the end of lap 12. As predicted, are the rest of the front runners in? I think they all are. So where are we going to come out in comparison to Max Verstappen as we nudge the wall hanging out at the final corner? There is Max. So push now. So we are going to lead at least one lap, albeit, of the Monaco Grand Prix today. But yeah, it's just not quite going the way I would have wanted so far. We're leading our teammate by 5.4 seconds. As Bottas has actually come out between Norris and uh, Verstappen. So that doesn't help our teammate out. And Bottas, yeah, calls a bit of an upset here. Maybe a bit of a train. Is it worth now going a bit longer? Have we got the pace over Valtteri and could maybe undercut some of the... or overcut some of these guys? I completely forgot to pit. How did I forget to pit? Why didn't the team warn me at the end of the lap there? I mean, Bottas is losing time to us, albeit not much. Uh, so, it's, yeah, we're definitely not going to be able to pull out an overcut on him or anything like that. But... How on earth did I forget to pit in this race? If I lose a place now, I'm going to be devastated. Verstappen practically pushing us along at the moment. Luckily, he doesn't need to risk anything down in towards the chicane. So we will live to fight another day. But yeah, these tyres have basically hit the cliff now. Losing a lot of time to Valtteri Bottas and that whole cluster of cars here. If we end up behind Pierre, I'm going to be absolutely gutted with myself for forgetting to pit when we should have. But 
Yeah, in towards the Raskas, and then into the pits we go. Make sure we get it slowed down just about into the pit lane here. But yeah, we should get it. We're going to be ahead of the Alpha Towers there. I think they're getting caught up in some traffic. Whether we're going to be ahead of the Alpine, though, not too sure which one that is. is a very, very different question here. Um, there goes both Mercedes. Nice stop as well. 2.4. I have to spam the gears a little bit to get it going once more. It is Esteban Ocon who we're going to be stop. racing with. No more scheduled pit stops. It looks like we've come out comfortably ahead of the Frenchman. Nice pit exit. Hamilton six seconds up the road then. We've got slightly fresher rubber right the way through to the end. We're running on lap 15 of 39. And this is the sort of pace we have got here when we get it hooked up around the Monaco Grand Prix. Look at that, 108! Great work. That's a new fastest lap of the race. Not far away from our qualifying time. How on earth have we managed that? The lap felt really good. I was, wasn't expecting it to be that quick there. And yeah, we have definitely got some good pace in the car. That should be fastest lap bonus point locked in. And now we've right caught up to the back of this Valtteri Bottas train here. So now it's a case of trying to see if we can gain any places before Valtteri pits. If he's going on to hearts, he'll be pitting around about now in this GP there. As that's a lot of curve through turn one. If he's trying to go to softs though, he's probably going to box in about five or six laps time. So fingers crossed he's going for the latter. But yeah, we now need to try and see if we can find any sort of moves on the Mercedes first of all there. Ten times. Formula One world champion Lewis Hamilton just in front of me. Oh, very, very early on the brakes there is Lewis, who just covers me off to defend. Somehow no damage from that one for either of us, but that was an ideal. So we head in through okay, Portier. Creating some breathing space between you and the car behind by a few seconds per lap. Team just warning us, obviously, about Esteban Ocon behind. Um, but yeah, nothing we could do that with high round, but definitely going to be able to capitalise soon unless Valtteri boxes. And, of course, there we go at the end of that lap, Valtteri Bottas into the pits. Our fuel strategy. We need to start conserving as much as possible. I completely forgot about that. Uh, we should be in a... Yeah, we'll be fine by the end of this race. Only a half distance still. Uh, but Hamilton, yeah, you can see we are definitely quicker than the Merc. As we head through the top of the hill, are we going to be close enough for a send? No, in a word, but we certainly made it very clear to Hamilton our intentions. He's very, very slow through the hairpin. Around the outside will go. He gives us the room. Oh, up the inside. Come on, this is a very unorthodox place to make a move. Up the inside into Bortier. Yeah, JB couldn't do it. But we now have up into P6 of the Monaco Grand Prix then. And that's really good to see. The fact we can still make overtakes here. Next up then, Lila Yuki Sonoda. Come on then, Yuki Sonoda. Really now starting to get into a good rhythm. These mediums are working so much better than the softs ever did. Oh, big, big send. Oh, almost lost the wheel out of my hands there. Just about was able to grip onto it, thanks to the gloves. That's why uh, sim racers wear them. Um, but there we go. That was a big old send on Sonoda. Luckily, he spotted it at the last moment there. We made it through without any contact. But now, fifth place then in the Monaco Grand Prix. Could a podium still be on there? As that was a bit of a trim over the chicane. Yeah, slightly newer medium tyres are working an absolute treat. It took us a little while longer this weekend than I was hoping to get our mojo back on the Monaco streets. But now, yeah, all over the back of the Spaniard Carlos Sainz. Fingers crossed we should be able to go for a move quite soon as we head out onto the tunnel. Again, we've got blue flags now out just up the road as well. Big cough of dust there from Carlos as Callum Eilot trying not to get in the way too badly. Are we going to be able to capitalise on this one? No, Eilot does jump out of the way. Rather well done to him. It's a lot of sights. You can just see there how hard he's pushing. Kicks out the back end on the exit of to back. But just little mistakes like that there. Took way too much curb. And that's going to put us out of attack range. Oh, big kick of overseer there again as we head down the hill. Down fuel. We need to start prioritising our reserves. we got more blue flags. There was Giovinazzi making a hash of it up the road there. Around the outside of Carlos we go. Leclerc can't make the move work there. As all sights just gets caught out horrendously through Portier there. Gio does finally jump out of the way and now we might have a golden opportunity to have a look past Carlos Sainz here. What is going on at the moment? Up the inside of the Spaniard we go. And I think we can thank oh, Giovinazzi for that one there. We tried to squeeze nice him out. That brings you up a place. I think by that point when we made contact, Sainz should have probably given up the corner there. But up now into fourth place. Charles Leclerc just one position in front of us and the only man separating us from a podium. 
Oh, come on, Schwarzman, get out of the way in your Haas car, man. Why is he not moving? These are the moments that can really define whether we get a look in at Charles Leclerc or not by the end of this one. Thank you very much. But yeah, 13 laps to go. Here in the Monaco Grand Prix. Oh, big wobble there at Turn 1. But we just need to try and cool the tyres back down. But not lose any time to the homeboy. Nick Schumacher now the next man with blue flags. But I think he's going to let Leclerc pass. Oh, no, he does okay, let us by. Second of the car ahead. Get ready to use DRS to overtake. Good awareness there from Mick Schumacher, who's allowed us just to gain a few tenths on Charles Leclerc by forcing him to sit back as we closed in and then letting us both by. Thank you very much. Weirdly enough, both Leclerc and myself are actually taking a lot of time yeah, at Lando Norris at the moment. Seconds. No idea what's going on with Lando as we're still, you see, leaning up towards the walls. Absolutely everywhere. But yeah, Lando's losing a lot of time to the power of us right now. Has he got an issue? I do hope not. Getting very, very worried about the tyres at the moment. We've been sat up in Leclerc's dirty air for so long now in this Monaco Grand Prix there as we've almost completely binned it out through Anthony Noakes. Looks like Lando hasn't got any issues. So you can just see that big, big kick of oversteer out the first corner. But yeah, these tyres are starting to bleed on me and it's not fun. The car behind is dropping back by about three tenths a lap. Oh, come on, Charles Leclerc. We just need him to make a mistake right at the right time here. Just see, we can't carry the same sort of momentum I want to through some of the twisty bits there as we just get that little bit closer once more. Mazepin now just in front. So maybe Nikita can come in the clutch for us here. Funnily enough, both Ferrari juniors have been the ones that have almost, well, completely screwed Carlos Sainz and almost screwed Charles Leclerc here as, oh, that's not good. What are you doing, Mazepin? That is not ideal to find in the tunnel there. Latifi as well, just up the road, but less than eight laps to go now from Monaco. Desperate times are calling for desperate measures. Latifi is going to hold up Charles Leclerc here just a little bit as we head out through the final corner. Are we going to be able to get close enough to Charles once more? Unfortunately, he's going to have the DRS from the Williams. Need to get a really nice run out of turn one. We might be able to have a look up towards the top of the hill. Oh, we just get so close, but we can't do anything as we just get a little bit offline there. And the downforce, again, just not working for us because of all that dirty air and aero wash from the Ferrari. And now you can just see again the tyres screaming at us for any sort of sympathy at the moment and we just cannot get round this Ferrari. Again, we get close in towards turn one. Can we get a run up the hill? Oh, come on, Matt. I just want any sort of looking, anything on Charles Leclerc, but laps are ticking by and opportunities are not opening up. Oh, we got more yellow flags out. Someone at the road's got issues. Or behind us, even I think it is. I want to say it's Mick Schumacher in his Ferrari. Which is not ideal for young Mick right towards the end of the Monaco Grand Prix. There has had a torrid time we have five laps all career with Haas. And now he's out of the Monaco GP. Giovinazzi is out as well. Uh, and we've got a safety car. We've been informed Bottas is out. It's all kicked is off. Lungard's out. How many cars have gone? Models. Well, Mick Schumacher retiring them from the Monaco Grand Prix. And it's actually all kicked off behind him. So Giovinazzi, I think, hit the back of Schumacher. Then we've got another Williams coming in. Just going into the back of him. As yeah, look at that Alfa Romeo's Bottas in there as well. It's all kicked off late on at the Monaco Grand Prix. And that is, what, three, four, five cars out, I want to say, of this race. Well, two laps to go then from the Monaco Grand Prix. And unless your name's Max Verstappen, this is going to be chaotic. Plenty of lap cars in the way as we try to get ready to resume racing here. But lots of opportunities for a lot of cars to potentially gain some positions there. Huge kick of understeer, though, at the final corner as we desperately try and put the power down here. These tyres are not in a good place at the moment. But again, it's just about trying to keep it clean as George Russell lets Charles Leclerc by. Oh, does he? Get very, very close as they head up the hill. But we're desperately just trying to build heat in the rubber again. As you can see how much we're struggling. Carlos Sainz tried to have a look up the inside there. But couldn't make anything work. As now we've got some lap traffic between myself and Charles Leclerc here. But we need to try and switch this rubber back on around the outside of George Russell. 
through the hairpin. No. The Aston Martin man is going to jump out the way, though, down through Portier. Esteban Ocon, next car up the road there, but three seconds already back behind Lando Norris at the moment. That's just how much we've struggled to try and get these tyres back up to temperature here as both of... Oh, no, that's not the Alpine. It's the Williams of Iowa, two laps down. So, yeah, not been a good weekend for young Callum. But, yeah, we've just got to try and make it through this final lap now. And to be honest... As much as I've wanted to try and jump Charles Leclerc in this race, he has not put a foot wrong late on. And we've been super aggressive with him, and he has defended everything. And almost made it look easy here, but on to the final lap then of the Monaco Grand Prix. Looks like Verstappen final lap. Final lap is about to make it two wins in the last two... Uh, no, three Grand Prix, of course, I think. Uh, one back in Imola. Didn't win Portimao last time around, if I'm not mistaken. No, he did win Portimao. Uh, last time around, of course. Yeah, he's about to make it three from three. Of course, second place all the way back at Bahrain early on in the year as well there. And it's been an up and down season so far. Fourth place isn't quite what I would have wanted from the Monaco race. But starting from P10, and especially with no safety car that's completely skewed the order, I think we're going to have to take that at the end of the day. They're carved our way through the field. And most importantly, the engine seems to have survived another Grand Prix, which is always nice, but... Yeah, just got to try and make it through the final few corners now. The tyres are completely gone as well. Uh, what a way are we at? That interest. Only 30% and they feel this bad. Goes to show, yeah, how much sort of heat dependency they have around the Monaco streets. They're almost Charles Leclerc through the final chicane of their race, though. But into the final corners, Max Verstappen wins the Monaco Grand Prix ahead of Lando Norris and Charles Leclerc there. We come through, though, from 10th on the grid to 4th. We'll take it. All right, race over. Take care of the car on the way in. Red Bull pulling out all the stops today. What a great win. Anthony Davidson, what helped them deliver this result, do you think? Well, you know what they say, to finish first, first you have to finish. And that fact was clear today with lots of retirements having a big effect on the outcome of the race. As a driver, you tend to keep reliability concerns to the back of your mind and just focus on what's in front of you. But for the teams, races like this can be very stressful. Red Bull are our winners today after showcasing some incredible driving. There's been a huge push from them lately to stay competitive with the other teams and they're certainly proving themselves. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. Max Verstappen should be pleased with his performance, making gains at the top of the table. So, Anthony Davidson, who would you rank as your driver of the day? I have to give it to Mr Monaco. They pushed and pushed and found some fantastic performance. It was just a pleasure to watch. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. No change in the top spot, but with today's points, their hold on the lead is getting weaker. Meanwhile, good work from Aston Martin this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. After an event like that, who knows what the sport has in store for us next time. Be sure to join us again as we continue to bring you the latest excitement in Formula One. Well, there we are then, guys, the end of the Monaco Grand Prix there. And like I said, we shouldn't be too disappointed with that result. Red Bull again in another league this weekend. Nothing we could do against Max Verstappen there. And Lando Norris seemed to be the only man that could get close to him there. But top four in the championship don't quite finish in the same order in the race there. The top four of us, yeah, inside the top four. Top three unchanged from the start to the finish. We went from 10th to 4th in the end, so rather happy with that one. Able to jump Sainz, Sonoda, Hamilton, Gasly, Joe, and Esteban Ocon picking up that one solidary point for Alpine there. McLaren chose a brave strategy, but it was all for nothing in the end there. Only eight cars finishing on the lead lap there. Guan Yu Zhou ended up a lap behind his teammate near enough from this one. Calamai lot two laps down, five DNFs 
after that strange roadblock late on in the day that took out both Alphas and Valtteri Bottas there. Of course, Mick Schumacher having his own issues as well as Sergio Perez. Championship-wise, though, we're falling further and further away at the moment. Yeah, hate to see it. Verstappen now 42 points clear after just five Grand Prix there, and he's now got a whole race wins margin over Charles Leclerc as well there. Lando, though, still in P3. We have made gains on Red Bull in the Constructors' Championship, of course, with that fastest lap bonus point as well there. Sonoda jumps Gasly, Hamilton jumps Bottas further down the order, and then you can see right towards the rear, Nikita Mazepin gets jumped uh, by Nicholas Latifi, who's right up to the top of that group based on Kankback alone there. But championship-wise, one point now between Red Bull and 2-2 two and two Motorsport here. If we can't fight for a Drivers' Championship, we definitely can for a Constructors this season. There are 12 points separate the top three teams. There's Ferrari still waiting in the wings and a long drop off back to Mercedes and Alpha Tari as well there. But thank you all so much for watching this video nonetheless. If you have enjoyed, do make sure you leave a like, get yourself subscribed as well. And yeah, we'll be back very, very soon with more Formula One content. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.